My name's Kale Rogers, and along with my three fraternity brothers, I'm a co-founder of Spice. Uh, yes, we are the Spice Boys. <laughs> As you can tell, I am Ginger Spice. <laughs> um, and so, so these four Spice Boys, they headed off into the world, and at MIT, they ran into a problem. Um, we were all four uh, athletes at MIT, and you know we we ran on a college budget. So, you know, typically when you run on a college budget, you you don't go out that much. But when you do eat out, you eat fast food. And we found that fast food it wasn't it wasn't doing it for us, right? The quality wasn't there. The health factors wasn't there. And so we decided to do a deep dive. And what we found out is that in the fast food industry, it's, it's tough. You know, there's 30% of the typical fast food restaurant goes to labor, less than 30% goes to ingredients, and somewhere between 20 and 30% of revenue go to other direct overhead. So in short, the restaurant industry, and the fast food industry especially, is a really low margin business. And so what the fast food industry has done is all of the innovation in fast food has been around decreasing ingredient costs, things like using harmful pesticides, really processing the ingredients, or large-scale agricultural techniques using growth hormones. But sometime in the last you know, 50 years, the customer changed. And the customer became a lot more health conscious. They're more aware of where their food comes from. They're demanding fresh and organic. Um, they want to eat healthier. And so our solution was the Spice Kitchen. It's the world's first fully automated restaurant. In the Spice Kitchen, you walk up and you place your bowl, and in the back is loaded with uh, really fresh, locally sourced ingredients. Everything's raw in a refrigerated environment, and then each meal is cooked uh, to order. So this is a gnocchi pesto dish. That was a chickpea curry uh, served on couscous with a cashew cilantro garnish. And uh, yeah, we have a chef. And <laughs> And so we can, we can service and create a, 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 a wide variety of meals. Uh, and then at the end, each pot is self-cleaning. Uh, and so what we developed is the world's first fully automated restaurant. It drastically reduces overhead costs. And you can think about it as like half of a Chipotle in throughput. Uh, and so one machine is a refrigerator, a dishwasher, a stove shop, and a chef all packed into one unit. These are some of the meals that we can make, from a chicken bacon hash to a shrimp and andouille jambalaya. And for you, the customer, you can order through an app or a touch screen on the side of the machine. I'm going to really streamline the process of getting great food. Our business model, I'll run you through it real quick, is that we own and operate these as restaurants. That's our ultimate goal, is to, to transform fast food. So every day, we go out and we stock our spice kitchen. Um, we prep the ingredients in a central commissary, take it out in trucks, and service a bunch of different locations around the city. And we actually did this once. We, uh, we ran a pilot, so we developed this last summer, and then in our co-working space over a little over a month-long period, we served meals to paying customers. And they were really excited about the food that they received. Uh, and it's awesome because our kitchens can go in a wide variety of places. Because they're much smaller than the average restaurant, they can go in university buildings, co-working spaces, gyms, uh, corporate office locations. We can service scub-scale places that other restaurants can't go. Initially, though, we're going to, to target universities. Um, and we can do that for three key reasons. We can service remote locations. So if you have a, a college campus, a place not right at the food court. Late night hours, there's not a lot of 24 hour dining options when you get to college, so if you do go to college, watch out for that, hopefully we'll have one there. And, and we can also service grab and go retail. These are the meals that high school, or I mean college kids are privy to right now, uh, and this is what spice meals can be. And so we have you know, talked to pretty much every university in the Boston area, and we got these three extremely interested, and we'll hopefully be running a pilot sometime soon with them. Um, and so that's, you know, that's, that's kind of our story, that's our business, um, that's what we created, but like, how, why does that matter to you guys, like how do you invent? And like as I'm sure you guys know when, when you came here, it's you find a problem and you solve it. Um, you gotta, as you have done, you've looked at the world's inefficiencies and approved, improved them. You found a problem or something you're passionate about and you made it better. 
And so I challenge you to keep doing that. You know, whether it's the water crisis or cancer or you know, space travel, or the fact that you really don't like that there's not a washing machine, a dryer, and something that folds and puts away your clothes in your closet already. I don't know, fix it. <laughs> and so you can challenge the way the world works and invent your own future. And I, you know, I've seen you guys do that already, and it's been really inspiring, actually. I was pretty happy, even if you are from McMinnville. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kidding, hey, go Ducks. There they go, <laughs> sorry. Um, there's a side note. So I guess the last one piece of advice in this whole process, and we started on this actually, what, something like 18 months ago. Um, Michael, one of our guys, came to, to me and the other, the other Spice Boys, and he took us out to ice cream, which is funny that a health food startup started with ice cream. Um, and now we've progressed to here, and something over the, the whole time that was really tough for me to learn is that when people want to give you advice. And so my advice to you on people giving advice is, Hear everything people say, but don't do it. And I understand that that sounds kind of bold and it sounds kind of weird and something that I really struggled with, but there's a lot of people out there that really want to give you advice. And, you know, some of them come with very high titles and are very fancy, and, and no one knows your passion or your problem like you do. So hear everything everyone says, listen, but then evaluate it, test it, you know, choose your own future. Um, and so that is, that's my talk. I actually have two questions. Your first name is Kale? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <so> <laughs> <laughs> We could, we'll talk about it yeah, after. Right. It's very funny. It's like you're meant to do what you're doing. Um, my second question is, how long does the longest meal take from start to finish? Yeah. Um, right now, it takes about five minutes. And that's because we prep everything from raw ingredients. So it's actually our shrimp and andouille jambalaya. The shrimp's raw. Um, all the vegetables are raw. The grains are generally pre-cooked or pre-blanched. Um, in the future, we're going to try to progress to bringing that down. Um, by using certain techniques that, you know, in our like commissary kitchen that keep the ingredients fresh, but maybe cook them a little bit beforehand to help out with that throughput time. There's the beep. I don't know. Can't point at it. Oh, yeah, you, you go ahead. I just had a question about permitting and like the food service, restaurant, yeah. that kind of thing. So do you have... Do you fall under like a food truck license or how does that work? Yeah, the, the big thing with any restaurant is that you have to have a HACCP plan, a hazard access critical control points plan, um, or any food service thing in general. And so you have to show from start to finish that you're not going to get anyone sick. We're currently in the process of doing that because we haven't had like a uh, commercial unit yet. But um, yeah, basically we have a, an idea of how we're going to do it and you can use a lot of sensors to figure out uh, if things are clean. Yeah, um, I just had a question about like, uh, are all your ingredients organic? And also, um, are you familiar with like food deserts in communities that are called food deserts? And would this be like a initiative to bring healthy choices to food deserts? Um, for the first question, organic, we try to, we had probably about 60% of our ingredients that were um, organic and locally sourced. Um, what is a food desert? <laughs> what, was, what is a food desert? I think I know what you're talking about, but I wanna make sure. Um, well, areas where you don't have like healthy choices, like a lot of fast food. My yeah. students can tell you. Sam, Anya, you want to tell? Yeah. Um, She's, Sam, stand up. What's a food desert? Can you tell me? Sam, Anya, from Kip Sunny Side High School, <laughs> seniors. Hey, Sam, I, I think you got to tell me what a food desert is. I don't understand. Yeah, um, I think 
I think to that part, like we, our, our main goal is to, you know, change, change the world and bring more organic, healthy options to people. Um, I think that we will have to do that still through taking trucks from a central distribution center. Um, and we don't necessarily grow the food, but I think we can service, I don't know the size of your location, if it's subscale, we can definitely serve that need because we don't need to serve as many meals as for say a Chipotle or another fast food brand um, in order to reach the same break even point. Um, um, uh, oh. Oh, oh, we got one more, we got one more. So, as starving college students, how did this get funded? Um, yeah, we, uh, we're currently in that process right now. Um, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we won um, a few awards and we were, used a lot of the entrepreneurship uh, resources at MIT, um, but we you know, have raised money from angel investors and hopefully are closing our seed round pretty soon um, with some venture capitalist money.